This is Linda Subler, and I'm going to be doing the instructions for the pie block for the Sweet Liberty pillow. I will have instructions following. I have my five by seven hoop loaded into my machine. I have the bat batting underneath along with the lightweight mesh cutaway stabilizer and my fabric has a fusible backing. I have set my machine up so first it will do the quilting, then we will do the applique. So I used the wavy horizontal to quilt on my pie block. Hi, this is Kat Ray filling in for Kristen Sum for this one project. Who feels like a pie? My sister Linda makes the best pies. I can't make pies, but I can stitch them. So on this block, we'll be going to our Kimberbell instructions for this project. And it starts on page 30 and it continues to page 31. I'm going to be working on the pie block. I go to my stick, which is that. I go to my embroidery files. I'm going to go bring up my quilting file first. It's going to be using the wavy four, which is <clears throat> on page 30, KDQ 111. Look for the embroidery files. Look for Pez, I use Pez for the brother. Then I need to look for four by six horizontal. That's four by six horizontal. I set this, that's just the quilting design. So I have to add in the pie. So I go back to my stick. I go to embroidery files. I go to my Pez. I bring up my pie and I go set, and then I can go to embroidery. Okay, Keep fish. Okay, always start making sure your bobbin is, is full. I'm hooping a five by seven hoop. Always hold the side arm when you're inserting the hoop and lock it. D different machines will be different, but for the brothers and baby lock, it's basically like that. I've threaded my machine with a light gray thread that you probably can't see from there. I'm going to start stitching my batting line down, batting placement line. I'm using light gray thread because it doesn't really matter at this point. Normally I pre-cut my batting, but I didn't this time. I just brought up a, a scrap. I, I'm covering the stitching lines there. Make sure I have enough. Again, the thread doesn't cut, the thread color doesn't matter. going to go around twice to make it easier to trim.
I'll be taking it off camera, off onto my table, but I'm gonna show you how to start it. Hopefully you can see this. I'm trimming around the batting. I guess I could trim most of it. When you're doing it like this, make sure you don't trim into your stabilizer because that's what has happened to me if I trim while it's in the hoop. Plus you can't get a really good angle at it. The next step will be stitching the placement stitch for where you're supposed to place the fabric. Place my background down. After it stitches this, I'll be choosing a color for my background quilting. Decision. Let's see. Maybe, I don't know. Which do you like for background quilting? The top one. Okay. Go with the top one. Got a thread. Pull out strand. Put thread on. As you can see, I don't have a lot on the spool, but for the amount of quilting we have here, it'll be fine. Whatever color you choose for your quilting, you want it to be Evident, maybe. Some people don't like to see the quilting at all, but if you are gonna choose a color that you want to be more visible, you can either pick like this background, like vanilla colored here, or you can pick this darker like taupe color here for, for background quilting that would blend in. And then you do the quilting. Okay, the next step's going to be the stitch placement line for the silver foil. I can still use that same color that I did the quilting with and then I'll change later on. This page, can you see that page? Or do you want to hold it up for them? Okay, okay so I, I did this stitching here. 
I'm going to be laying down my leather here and put a piece of tape. Then I'm going to be stitching around here. So I'm going to switch to a different thread. I'm going to take this leather, vegan leather, and place it over the stitching lines, making sure I have the right glasses on. Okay. Put a piece of tape at the top. Check if you have big fingers and you've moved your piece. It's easier to do when you're not on camera. Okay, that looks good. So I'm stitching the pie pack down line. Then I'll trim the leather as desired. Better to trim on a flat surface. Turn the hoop when you're trimming. So it looks like that. Can they see it? Okay. I can leave this color in at this point. It's just gonna, um, I think I'll change the color so it'll be easier for you guys to see. I'm gonna be doing the, the, the stitch tacked on line for the blue leather. I might wanna put on pause for a sec. Okay, and for the um, blue, leather portion I'm doing the Polyne on Madeira 1967. Sometimes you can tell when you're feeding the thread through that it's just not great. So what they're going to ask us to do is to stitch this one. Okay, these three lines to show the blueberry filling, and then we're going to be placing the leather on top. jump stitches. And then, as directed, I'm going to lay this blue leather down. And you can tape it if you like, or you can hold it. It's always safer to tape it so you don't hurt yourself. And I'm always looking to make sure that the thread hasn't got caught up there. Again, it's better to put it on a flat surface, but we're gonna trim carefully around the leather.
Let me take it to the table so it's just stop this. Oh, and we're on page 31. I've trimmed my blue leather and we're going to be putting uh, white in and stitching the white stripes flag fill. Okay, the machine dinged, so that means I have to change my thread to red for the red stripes. is to stitch the blue field for the flag. The next color of change will be white. The white will be the stars in the field of the flag. Okay, we have to change the thread color for the, for the flag pole. I'm going to be using Shadow 1BLK3 from Glide. It'll be nice when I have new eyes. I'll be able to see what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, flight pole. I'm gonna leave the same color in and I'm gonna do the steam. If you don't want your steams quite so dark, you can change it to a different color. Okay, we just stitched, can you see that? Yeah. We just stitched the steam detail. Now we're gonna be stitching this area so we know where to place our felt. I'm gonna change thread colors to brown. The felt that they're using, they call it gingerbread colored. cut some of those jump stitches. So now we lay our gingerbread felt down. This is fuzzy, so it, we really don't need to put tape on it. 
if you're not using Kimberbell, you want you want to have a felt that's a fairly good quality felt that's pliable. But if you probably can't see this, can they see it? No. Yes, they can. Okay, they can see that there's like patches in there. Some of the the cheaper craft felts don't hold up to washing, and they don't really hold up well. If you're sitting against the pillow and you have abrasion from people rubbing against the pillow, it can wear through. And then covering those placement lines. The dinging was from the fact that the block is essentially finished. I'm going to be trimming all the way around here. And then I have to go in and I have to trim these three areas. So I might trim part of this on this video part. And then I'll put it down and I'll trim around the other areas. But you want to trim close and straight. And I don't want to keep trimming like that because it might be jagged. Some of the people, can you see it like, like that? Okay, everything's falling. Okay, several people have had problems getting this area cut out. So one of the girls who mentioned that she said I could use her name, Sharon Steele, said I use a seam ripper on the vent holes. I go down through the middle, just under the felt. Be careful not to cut the leather. And then I use the small scissors to cut the excess off. So, the, the, you really should do this on a tray table or something. So, basically, taking a seam ripper, and you're going to be feeling down, and you don't want to go too far, because then you'll ruin the leather. The seam ripper may not be as sharp as hers. Let's see if I managed to do that. Okay, let's see. Always do it carefully because you don't want to ruin it. Good tip. It does work really well. I still have some work to do. Can I see it? Yeah. Okay. But the goal is to cut all this around here, and then I'm going to cut this off. And when we stop here, and then I'll... The flag is done. You can trim it and use your lint roller to get the extra lint and it looks pretty good I think. So there's our pie block. Thank you.